In today's video, I'm going to give you a macro program that's going to allow you to create any size hexagon you want with any size end mill. I'm also going to walk you through the thought process on how I wrote this macro program. So, if you are here for the G12.1 hex milling macro, then skip to this time right here. Now, before I go into the details of that, I need to explain to you what it is we're trying to do with this end mill right here to achieve a hexagon like this right here. So let's get into that part first. Just want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of the channel, Dynamic Machine of Detroit. If you are in the Michigan or Canadian area, make sure you check out sales at dynamicmachine.com. And uh, yeah, back to the video. So what do we have to do in order to be successful in today's video? Well, it is quite simple, really. We need to take any size end mill we want and make any size hexagon we want, like the one you see on this part right here. So how's that gonna work exactly? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to input in information like our end mill size, our hexagon size, our Z location, and our feed rate, and our RPM, and the machine is going to take care of the rest. It's going to calculate the points around this hexagon and mill it in space using polar interpolation. Now, if you don't know what polar interpolation is, I really kind of want to tell you just to relax because everyone thinks this is way more complicated than it is. See, just imagine six points out in space to program a hexagon. That's the same six points we're going to use to program this hexagon in polar interpolation. The machine does all the thinking. You're telling it to move as if you were like on a three axis mill and the machine is calculating all the rotary movements for you to achieve those six points you told it to go to. So a lot of people look at these tool paths and think there's some crazy wizardry going on, but the machine is taking care of all the math for you to take the positions in space that you wanted to get to and turn those into rotary movements. So honestly, relax because it's very simple. Now, That's it. Yeah, that's it. So let's get into how to uh, use this macro. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. A lot of work goes into making these videos and I honestly do the majority of the editing at home on my own time. So yeah, I think it's really cringy to ask for that, but I have to. So thank you. Okay, now let's actually write the macro. So how do we use this macro program right here? Well, to be honest with you, it is quite simple. So this is going to be very, very quick. If you go in the description of this video, you will be able to download the full program. Now, don't worry, because you'll notice some differences. I'm going to explain them in a second. But all you really need to know to make this macro program work is right here. All right. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to call up your end mill. It might be tool 1232. It might be tool 0101. But you need to change this right here. You are then going to need to be responsible for commanding a G0, X safety position, Y of zero, always be at Y of zero, Z of 0.1, which is you know some safety point in front of the part, 100 thousandths, and then C of zero. Now, you can change the position of this hex right here. If you say C at 20 degrees, if you say C at 10 degrees, that will put the hex in a different position. All right, next thing I did is I turned on the RPM of my live tool spindle, so I went 1800 RPM here. So all that's basic stuff right there, but now how do you make the macro work? Again, copy it from the description, put it into your DN machine, and then change these next few variables. So we're going to start with pound one. Pound one equals 0.5. This is our tool size. So that is what you're going to put right here, your tool size in pound one. Next, you're going to say your hexagon size. So right here, I say pound two equals 1.5. This is the hexagon, the bigger hexagon on that part I showed you earlier that I am making. That is what this does right here. After that, moving on to pound three, you notice I mainly went in order here. Pound three equals minus 1.55. That is going to be your Z depth. So you're going to wrap it to a safety position, right? And then it is going to feed in to that position after you're in the safety position. I said position a lot there, but that all made sense. So I'm gonna keep it. All right, now what is next? Well, you're gonna see right here, pound four equals 0.050. This is going to be the radius that it does around the corners of the hexagon to not cut air and make the hexagon not sharp. Now, I don't have it written out in the example here. This does exist in the initial macro that's in the description, but it's not on my dry erase board because, well, I don't want to write the same thing six times. That's why. So that is going to be the radii. It does around the corners of your hexagon. Moving on to pound nine equals 40. That is your feed rate. So in this case, I am going 1800 RPM at 40 inches a minute. 
So with those five pieces of information right there, what your machine is going to do with this program is wrap it out into space right here. Oh, forgot to explain this. This blue hexagon right here is your part. This red hexagon right here is your toolpath. Now this probably makes more sense, even though I labeled it right here for you. Anyways, so what your machine will do with this program is wrap it out to a point in space that is safe. And then it will feed across the top of the first flat, go around, do the entire hexagon, and then it's going to move out every single time. So that's it. That's all you need to know how to use this macro. So now for the part of the video that is going to be super painful, let's go over my thought process on how I wrote this macro, what a lot more of this means, and yeah, make sure everyone clicks off. That was a good clap. All right, how does this work? Well, one little uh, disclaimer here is you're gonna have to somewhat understand trig in order to do this. Now I'm gonna tell you the trig, so if you don't understand the trig, then don't worry about it. But if you're curious as to how this works, then go look up So Katoa on YouTube. There is a million different videos on how to do trig. This is not gonna be a trig lesson. That's just not in the scope of this video. So if you wanna learn how to do right angle trig like we're going to do right here, go look it up and then come back to right here. So hi, welcome back to the video after your trig lesson. Let's go over how I figured out the points of this hexagon. So, a couple things to keep in mind here. What, what are you looking at, right? Well, you need to imagine the axes of the machine before we can do any of this trig and you know, program this part, okay? So when I move this way, I am moving in C. Now this is C minus, and going this way is C plus. I know that's backwards from Cartesian coordinates, but that's just how polar interpolation works. Bear with me. Now, when I go this way, down, we are moving in X minus, and when I go up, we are moving in X plus. Now, I just want to explain this to you because X is a diametrical axis. It wouldn't make any sense if we were trying to make a one inch hexagon, and because X of zero is right here, we told it to make a half inch hexagon and did all the math ourselves. Machines double the amount in X to make the programming as simple as possible. So when you're turning a one inch diameter, you program X of one inch, even though you're only half an inch from center. Again, this is all gonna make sense in a second, just bear with me. So C minus and C plus is a radial axis, which means if I move half an inch in C, I actually move half an inch. If I move half an inch in X, I only move a quarter of an inch. That might sound confusing, but trust me, it makes way more sense than if you didn't do it. So with that being said, you're gonna notice I'm multiplying some numbers by two and dividing some numbers by two. This is to accommodate the radial and diametrical values that you're going to input into your machine. So how do we do that? Well, like I just explained right here, so like I just explained right here, you have your different, v so. Like I just explained right here, you have your different variables that you're going to input into your program to create this hexagon. We need to take these variables and math out the math and do a bunch of math to create that. So let's go through step by step what I did to do that. So first things first, when you say tool size 0.5 and you say hex size 1.5, you are saying this whole hex size right here of 1.5 and this whole tool size of 1.5, but if you look at the way the trig's done, that's not gonna work, right? I'm not doing trig for this entire hexagon, I'm doing trig for half this hexagon, and I'm doing trig for half this tool diameter. So, what's the first thing I do? I take pound one, and I add pound two, and then divide it by two. So, as you can see right here, I have it written out, pound five equals the distance from the center of my end mill to the center of my hexagon. So congratulations, you already have the first number you need to create this hex. So what are we doing next? Well, we found this number right here. Now, if we use the tangent of 30 degrees, which this angle right here is 30 degrees, we can get this point here. So that's exactly what I did. You'll see pound six equals the tangent of 30 degrees times pound five. So right here, pound five, we figured out our length. Just pound six equals tangent of 30 degrees times pound five that is going to get whoop right here. All right, it's magical. So what do we need to figure out next? Well, 
this next point right here is actually simple. X right here, that's zero, right? So I don't need to go any higher or lower than zero. It is on the center line of our spindle. So X right here is zero. We already have that point. What we need now is our C minus point. What is this length right here? Well, what's kind of cool is, is with the same trig setup I did up here, we can also calculate that length because every single one of these sides of a hexagon is the same length. So if I figure out this length here, it doesn't matter. It's the same as that length, that length, that length, and that length. So what did I do to figure out the length from center to right here? Well, that's pound seven, by the way, pound seven. Now you know, all right. So pound seven equals pound five, which again is this length here, divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. So it's divided by the cosine of this angle here, 30 degrees. And that's going to get what is called the hypotenuse of our right angle triangle right here, which is our longest line. And that is going to be the line that also gets us right here. So what does that all look like? We just figured out three numbers. We figured out pound five, pound six, and pound seven. So how do you take those values and convert them into positions to do this hexagon? Well, funny you ask, because luckily this dry erase board flips around. So you just watched me calculate the points for pound five, pound six, and pound seven. That's it, that's all we need. So you will notice right here, I have numbers associated with each one of the positions. That happens to be the order in which I am doing them. So we are going to start here with number one, go to number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and out, and that's what's gonna do this part. But if you look, all I needed to do was use pound five and pound six for every position. So in our example, we calculated a point from this center line right here to right here. So let's just start with that point. So you're kind of in the same, you know, part of the hexagon. So you'll see, I went to X of pound five times two. Why am I multiplying this value times two? So like I explained earlier, X is a diametrical axis. It's only moving half of what you actually see on the control. So if I went to X of pound five, I'd only be halfway between here and here. Again, that's because you're actually machining something this wide, but you're only commanding it from center. So we need to double the values for X. So you'll notice all my X values are pound five times two for all the corners of this hexagon. All right. The next one again is C of minus pound six. We are on the negative side. This is negative. This is positive. This is positive. That's negative. All right. But here, before I go over here, check this out. We just go down here. C is minus pound six, just like it is up here, but it's the X that changes. It's just the same X, but on the negative side of the center line of our spindle. And if you go over here, you'll notice X doesn't change, but C goes from negative to positive. And if you go up here, C doesn't change, but X goes from negative to positive. So that's how you get those four points. They're all done with the exact same numbers. Just again, negative or positive iterations of those numbers, and that's what makes that happen. Now next is the last one, and that is X of zero, because X is right here. We are on the center line, which is that right there, but now C is minus pound seven. And the only difference between that side and this side is that da, 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 this is positive. So that is what I do when I write down macros, right? I will draw the hexagon. I will plot the points and see what I did to get them. But that's the thought process behind this macro. So now we need to take these positions and put them into a program so we can make a part. And don't worry about number one yet. I'm gonna explain that. Just, just don't worry about number one. Don't worry about it. So we're gonna flip the dry erase board back over. I promise you I'm gonna explain one. That can only be one. I plead the fifth. Comment down below if you watched that when you were a kid. It was a great show. Before we go into all these movements of this hexagon here, you are going to need to fire a G17 for your XY plane and a G12.1. G12.1 is going to turn normal coordinates into polar coordinates, which means in order to achieve the points of this hexagon, the machine is going to calculate the rotary movements it has to do to achieve these points. Like I said earlier, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's an eight right here, but when I get to that, I'm gonna explain. I, I, I don't, I can't put everything up here. There's only so much room on a dry erase board. So let's start with number one. So we know X right here is going to just be pound five times two. 
That's going to be this position in X. Now, C is going to be pound six plus pound one. Well, what is that? Well, right here is C of pound six, X of pound five times two. So what I did is I took pound one, which is the whole diameter of our tool, and I added it to this position. So what's nice is, is C works radially, right? So it's double the positional clearance I need to get to a safe spot just to add the diameter of the tool. So now we are in a safe space. That's cringy. So now we are in a safe space. So what I do next is I move Z. I say G1, Z a pound three. So right now you are roughly where my expo marker finger setup is. When I say G1, Z of pound three, whoop, we're going in like that. So what's the next thing I do? Well, I go to C of minus pound six, okay? And that's right here. And then from there, I go to X of zero, C of minus pound seven. From there, I go to X of minus pound five times two, C of minus pound six. That will take us here. From there, I go to C of pound six. Now you'll notice I don't have to put X's on each line. I'm already at X of minus pound five times two right here. I don't need to tell it to go there again to get here. I just need to move in C. I don't need to tell X to do anything. It's not gonna move. So I just say C of pound six and that goes over here. Next I do is X of zero, C of pound seven, whoop, right there. And the next thing I do is X of pound five times two, C of pound six, that's going to get me right here. Now here is what I didn't draw on the dry erase board. And it's because if you look at the program down in the description, you're gonna notice that each one of these lines ends differently. There is a comma R of pound one divided by two plus pound four. I'm not 100% sure that's off memory. We're gonna find out how good my memory is in editing. Anywho, so what's pretty cool is, is I can put a comma R on the end of each one of these lines. What is that going to do? Well, comma R is going to look at where it's going on this line and where it's going on the next line. And it's going to determine G2s or G3s for you. So counterclockwise or clockwise arcs, or clockwise or counterclockwise arcs. It's gonna figure that out for you based on the information on the lines, right? So if I tell it to go to two right here, and I say comma R of point whatever, it's gonna say, okay, which way are you going next? This way or this way? Because I'll arc into that line. So it's really easy to actually put radii on the corners of our hexagon here. So again, I'll put it up on the screen right now. It's what the formula looks like. It's not too crazy, but it is what I use to arc around all these points, which brings me back to eight right here. If I just go off into space like this, the last corner won't have a radii on it. It won't know which way to go. But I don't wanna tell it to go all the way to two. I wanna go just as far as necessary to create that arc around this corner. So that's what this is right here. So this is gonna be C of pound six, minus pound one divided by two minus pound four. So this is going to be what you need to figure out that radii on this corner right here. And then from there, I just say U of pound one divided by two. So just move up half your tool radius, just move up an X, whatever. And then I cancel polar interpolation with G13.1. So yeah, not sure why I stopped filming that day. I didn't do an outro at all. So uh, yeah, that's actually it. That's the end of the lesson. You can take everything I just showed you and program a hexagon on your lathe using polar interpolation. No problem now. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, next video is gonna be on this guy right here. I kind of am excited to show you guys this one because there is a macro that runs in the background of this machine that makes it so pretty much any single turret lathe out there, doesn't matter which one you have. If it's not this, you can't compete with it on speed. It's, uh, it's not a sales pitch, honestly. By the end of that video, you're gonna see. It's, it's, it's a really genius thing Miano thought of. So I'm really excited to show you guys that because it's the kind of stuff I like making videos about. So if you enjoy the video, yeah, hit like, subscribe, ring that bell, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.